tapping gas grenade, one snare trap, and one baseball bat, all used by Dr. Harleen Quinzel, a.k.a. Harley Quinn, during a recent assault on the Bloodhaven police station. From what we gather, Scarecrow sent Harley to break out Poison Ivy from the lockup in blood. One black mask worn by Black Mask, a.k.a. Roman Sionis. Sionis never really recovered from the night of the Black Gate riots, the night Joker showed up. Roman was an old-school gangster. Joker, well, I'm not sure what he was. Talia. I'm sorry. One ceremonial sword owned by Talia Al Ghul. Miss Al Ghul was a wanted terrorist and an associate of her father, Raish. But Joker got to her before we did. From what I hear, Batman put this blade to good work after she died. One Tommy gun, used by Peyton Riley. A.K.A. the ventriloquist. Or maybe the gun belongs to the puppet. I never really understood what's going on there. One ventriloquist dummy, A.K.A. Scarface. This ain't the original Scarface. It's a Joker knockoff. Don't ask me why, but the clown took a liking to these creepy things. One freeze ray, used by Mr. Freeze, a.k.a. Victor Freeze. We, uh, had to stop playing with this after the commissioner caught us making ice cream. Freeze has kept quiet since leaving Arkham City. Maybe Batman finally talked some sense into him. A selection of body parts belonging to Warren White, a.k.a. the Great White Shark. White got himself sent to Arkham on an insanity plea. He lost a few things other than his mind while there. Made the new look work, though, I gotta say. One mask and jacket worn by Anarchy, a.k.a. Lonnie Machen. I wasn't even a cop when this kid tried to hit Gotham. No one's seen him since. No one knows where they're keeping him. I guess the government don't like anarchists too much. One pair of shock gloves, worn by the electrocutioner, a.k.a. Lester Buczynski. Joker hired this guy on the night of the Black Gate riots, and then he killed him. I heard Batman borrowed these for a while before handing them in. I guess he prefers beating up punks the old-fashioned way. One custom-tailored top hat, worn by Jervis Tetch, a.k.a. the Mad Hatter. Guy's mad, all right. He tried to brainwash Batman in Arkham City. <laughs> he got the Wonderland kicked out of him instead. I hated letting him go. This guy's too creepy to stay free. One vial of Titan formula. One set of wind-up explosive false teeth. One pair of actual X-ray specs. One toy gun loaded with one toy flag and five real bullets. All used by the Joker. No known alias. It's one hell of a toy box. I'm glad no one's gonna play with it again. One stuffed bear in a canister of Titan formula. Owned by Bane, a.k.a. Unknown. We had to let Bane loose after the Arkham City fallout. Guy was messed up anyway. Serious Titan withdrawal. My guess, he's off somewhere getting clean. And he's not going to be happy when he comes back. Two ceremonial swords used by Rosh. I mean, Rish al -Ghul. We found these at the bottom of Wonder Tower the night of Protocol 10. They were covered in blood. No body, though. One Arkham Asylum branded shock collar, worn by Killer Croc, a.k.a. Waylon Jones. We found this thing in the sewers under Arkham City. And that ain't good. 
because it was supposed to keep that bastard under control. One rifle and two wrist-mounted guns used by Floyd Lawton, a.k.a. Deadshot. <sighs> Another guy we had to let go after Arkham City got shut down. Still, that doesn't mean he got his toys back. One ceremonial sword owned by Talia Al Ghul. Miss Al Ghul was a wanted terrorist and an associate of her father, Raish. But Joker got to her before we did. From what I hear, Batman put this blade to good 